you know, and people always get this wrong. I don't know how they get this wrong. He's coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And it doesn't say that. He said he's going to present to himself a church wow. without spot, yeah. blemish, or wrinkle. Yeah. He's going to present. You're right on it. <laughs> he's going to present. He's going to do this. <laughs> but he already see that. Mm -hmm. He already see that. Come on. See what I'm talking about? Because mm -hmm. he, he sees he looks through faith eyes too. Yeah. He's always calling yeah. those things that be not as though they were. were. Come on. <laughs> he just come like on. Mm. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Because you know, he's going to be doing the Sunday 4 p.m. healing service. Oh, really? After all of the uh, word to come, then we <clears> going into demonstration. Oh, there you go. Yes, sir. There you go. Ha, Sarabokosha. Word without mm -hmm. demonstration is nothing. We Come gotta on. do the demonstration. Come on. And that's how you grow your church. Yeah, word with demonstration. Come on. I yes, sir. You was one of the first guys I seen do that. Besides <laughs> Bishop, you were the first man. Phyllis Wheatley. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You always had demonstration. Yeah, got to. Always. Got to. Mm -hmm. Got to. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are live right here at KAZ Radio, Cleveland's online inspiration station. And today in the studio, I have two very powerful men of God with us. And that is none other than my friends and yours, Apostle and Pastor Apostle Nelson. Nelson and Pastor McCurry. How are you gentlemen doing? Excellent. Absolutely Excellent. wonderful. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, you know, I have had you on here before, uh, Pastor McCurry. Yes. And our audience knows your testimony. But guess what? They don't know Apostle's testimony. Oh. <laughs> wow. So before we get into anything, my audience wants to know, we know you're saved. Okay. But how did you come to know Jesus Christ? Wow. When I met the Lord when I was nine years old. Wow. I was called to preach when I was nine years old. I decided not to do it, so I went and got drunk. At nine years old? At nine years this, old. This is going to be a good story. <laughs> let, 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 let me get that camera on him. <laughs> I went and got drunk at nine years old. Okay. Because I was already in the church. And I heard my pastor say, if you be bad, God won't have nothing to do with you. Since I didn't want to be no preacher, I figured I'd just go on and be bad. And I know getting drunk was being bad. Mm. So I started getting drunk at nine, and I graduated to drugs and all the stuff that go with sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at 32, I hit the bottom. Wow. When I was 32 years old, I hit the bottom. And when I hit the bottom, he was at the bottom. Wow. Wow. And said he didn't change his mind. <laughs> so I finally, I said, okay then. You know, he didn't change his mind. So I said, okay. And that's what's 36 years ago. Apostle. Yes, sir. Help, help, help me understand. Okay. When you hit the bottom. Yes, sir. What was that bottom? What, what was that, that, that um, changing moment? No money. No money. Money. Wow. No money. I went from, I had a job yeah. where I was making $25,000 a year yeah. in 1975. Oh, that's some money. Like money. But I was hustling. <laughs> oh, on top of I that. And I was making from fifty to $75,000 a year on the side. Wow. And I went from that kind of salary to getting food stamps. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, just food stamps. <laughs> wow. I had eight cars. And the, got all of them but one, and the one, the repo man was looking for, I was sleeping in it, running from the police. Just doing real wow. good sin stuff. Wow. Mm. But I'm not apostle. I was a real good sinner. The, the devil and I were real good friends. Y'all was we, tight. Yeah, we were real good friends. I got you. I got you. You know, we were real good friends. He liked me, and I liked yeah, him. Yeah. But, and it was all right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and and so connect the dots for me. Well, I had a mama. Okay. Mm. That got up at five o'clock every morning mm. and went in the bathroom and prayed. Yes. Lord, save my son. Every morning mm. at five o'clock, she mm. got up and went in the bathroom wow. and got on her knees and prayed. Lord, save my son. 
And when I heard, hit the bottom, mm -hmm. I could still hear that voice saying, I didn't change my mind. Wow. So I accepted the call, and it's just been exciting ever since then. Wow. Been exciting ever since then. Well, Apostle, that yes. is that is truly a a great testimony. It was awesome. <laughs> um, you know, I, I love the fact that you knew that mom was interceding on your behalf yeah, for all yeah. those years. Just as wicked as I could be. You know? just yeah. and, and that was just, it, yeah. it, and it wasn't that you were a bad person. Yes, it was. You were denying it. Yes, you were denying it. No, I was, a bad, you were a, bad I was a bad person. At nine, you was bad? I was a bad person. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Watch this. It was a dog in the neighborhood named Butch, and uh -huh. they, they named me after the dog. They named you Butch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Mm, mm, mm. That is that is amazing. That is amazing. But at least you're honest about it. You know, at least you at least at least you are honest about it because you know God God is 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 is, is as you were talking to me earlier. That grace yes. is amazing. That grace it is awesome. amazing. Man, yes it is. Because if you had been living back in the Old Testament days, you'd have yeah. got rid of you at they nine. They would have stoned me. So you you understand they the grace of God, God as well? Oh, oh, yes, he do. <laughs> and stoned me right there. Oh I man, have felt it because I would have been drunk. You'd have been drunk. <laughs> no, you didn't even. You didn't even I would have been here. Oops. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. That that is a, that is a great yeah. story. Well, I am happy to have you both here. I know Glad to be here. you all have a relationship. Share with us you all's relationship because uh, it's deeper than just this this show that we uh, this uh, particular um, uh, event you're having. You guys have a much deeper relationship than that. Share that with us, would you please, Pastor? Well, about um, nineteen years yeah, ago. Yeah, nineteen years ago. Um, you know, you have two testimonies. I think you had a testimony when you come from the world into the church. Yeah. Then you have another testimony sometimes in the church. And that was that um, I got mad at God, mm. and I backslid. Okay. I told the Lord, um, leave me alone. I want to talk to you no more. And um, we done. Mm. And, uh, you know, the church always told you, if you did stuff like that, he kill you, right? Yeah, you're yeah. proclaimed. So true. He ain't kill me. Mm. He loved me. He sent this man from Georgia 19 years ago just to rescue me. Okay, now when you say set, I mean yeah. what? He was in Georgia. Okay. And Living was, in Georgia. Watch yeah, what happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. We had two congregations okay. in Georgia doing real good. Mm -hmm. I had just remodeled the second church. House was paid for. Furniture was paid for. And in 1995, the Lord said, what would you do to get everything I right. promised you? He asked me and my wife mm -hmm. the same question at the same time. We say whatever you say. He said, give up the two churches. Give away your house. Give away all your furniture and go to Cleveland. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Okay. Now, yes, sir. Now, Jesus said that to a young man. Mm-hmm. And he went away. He was saying. He was, he was sad. sad. He was right. sad. You do it, and you ain't sad. It was the love affair. Remember now, mm. when you allow him to love you, and you realize he's your source of everything, anything he asks you for is a seed for something better. Yeah. Okay? Right. Anything he asks yeah. you for yeah. is a seed for something better. So we gave up the two churches. We gave away the house. We gave away all the furniture. Mm -hmm. We came to Cleveland with some pots and pans <laughs> 19 years ago. Yes. And he has been real good. Apostle. Yes, sir. Are you sure you heard from the Lord? Well, I've been here 19 years and I ain't never had to eat pork and beans unless I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> All the, all the bills paid. Yeah. yeah. And I keep two dollars and fifty cents in my pocket. Wow. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ is awesome. He yes, oh he, he been is. there. He's awesome. Yes, he because is. I mean, you could have sold those things. No. Instead you sold But those that's things. what he said do. Yeah. The, the, oh, oh he didn't say sell affair, it. He said the sold love it. unfair. He said yeah. make this a seed. So mm -hmm. we gave it the two I had already been training a son that took over the two churches. We gave away the house and all the furniture, mm -hmm. and we knew it was a seed, so we were excited because it's a love affair. Remember now, most people struggle with obeying because they have not allowed him to love, love them. them. Yes. Right. Like yes. he wants to. That's it. When, when you're being loved like you want to, 
it's easy to say yes to love. Yes. It's easy to say yes to yes. love. Yes, that is that is truly a powerful. So, so mm -hmm. now, you all have met. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Okay, and it wasn't and, a good first meeting. And to tell us about it. Well, I called my friend because you know when you're in a backslidden mode, you don't know how to come back. Okay. I didn't know how to come back, and I called her and I said I need some help because some things were happening in my life, and I knew that it was time for me to get back with the Lord. Yes. She said we just got this new pastor in from Georgia. I think y'all would enjoy each other. So I made an appointment. I came to see him, and he made me mad. Mm. He made me so mad. Oh, we had that meeting, and he challenged me for the first time. Oh. Somebody challenged, challenged me. you. He wouldn't listen to how I was complaining about what had happened. He wouldn't listen to all the stuff I was talking about. He said, what about you? Everything, he turned it back to me. Wow. And I sat there and I said, I ain't never, never coming back. Then he called me fat and sloppy. He said, you're fat and sloppy and you need to work on that. And about that, at that time I was 300 pounds. I said, oh man. I walked out that church and I slammed the door. Wow. And I said, I never come back. Wow. I went to work that mm. night and all I could hear was his voice. Mm. And since that time, 19 years ago, we connected. He is just not my apostle. Mm -hmm. He is my father. He spoke to you like a father. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And he didn't shrink back. Wow. And he didn't shrink back. And my life has never been the same since I came in contact with him. God sent him specially for me. Wow. I always tell people, I say, everybody else get a chance to enjoy him. Right. <laughs> but he was sent for me. Right. And brought me back in, showed me the love of Christ for the first time in my life. I got out of religion. I got into relationship. Yes. I began to understand God loved me. And yes. as you know, in every one of my broadcasts, first thing I talk about is God's love. Yes. Because yes. I had to experience him loving me. Because there's no way, you know, because they tell you, you know, oh, God, yeah. oh, you're yeah, going to yeah, get in a yeah. car accident, you're going to get sick. Yeah. None of that stuff yeah. happened, man. No, no. He loved me back, sent this man of God to come rescue me from where I was at because he knew that that's not where he wanted me to stay. In 1995? Yes, sir. It's been 19 years. Wow. Me and have been together. We still spend time together every week. Wow. I enjoy spending time with my father. So, Pastor Gray. Yes, sir. Tell the audience. Yes. When did you come to your, the realization, and when did you go back? After that comments that, that the apostle made, uh -huh. you struggled with it. Yes, sir. But how long did it take you to recognize he was telling you the truth? That day. Oh, it all happened that Oh, yeah. You just. I left it. there, went to work, uh -huh. and the Lord started. I heard, all I heard was his voice. That's all I heard. Sure. You know, because he got a certain voice. You know. Right. You need to do, and you right. need to do. And I'm like, leave me alone. Mm. You know, and it wouldn't stop. And I was right back there the next week. Wow. And I said, I want your help. I want you to help restore me as a man. I want you to help me restore me as who I am in Christ. Wow. And he began to work with me um, every week. I sat with him across from him. And he loved on me and showed me. And now that's why I am who I am today. Apostle, that is an awesome question, uh, awesome story. Did you... Recognize then that that was the reason why you came to Cleveland. Much what happened now. Um, I've always wanted the opportunity to uh, help somebody that was like I used to be. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There you go. So when I met him, oh. it was amazing. This is what the Lord done for me, though. He told me what to say, and he told me this. He said, "If he's the son." Your voice will connect to his heart, mm -hmm. and you and he'll know it, and wow. that's what happened. You know, in the love of family, you know that's true. Your voice connected to your wife's heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your voice yeah. connected to your wife's heart. Yes. The father's voice. It, the Bible said, "The you know his voice. When the right person comes into your life, you know their voice. Yes. Because it's a connection. Yeah. Now, do you have?" more sons as intimately as you have with Pastor Greg or mm -mm. is he the mm -mm. your firstborn he's in the sense? cream of the crop he's the cream of the crop I, I've got some other sons in my congregation that I'm training 
I've got another son in Flo in uh, Sparta, Georgia, that okay. has a congregation. But um, there's something about the firstborn mm -hmm. that if you do it right with the first one, the first one helps you with all the rest of them. Yes. Now he's an example to every son I have, in every other every everybody that's connected to me. Mm -hmm. There is a standard where they see their potential when they see him. Yes. You see what I'm talking about? Yes, they yes. see their potential. They, and I tell them, I say, if you stay, you're going to be all right. Amen. All, you, all I want you to do is stay. Because I, I don't care where you are. I know how to get you to where you're supposed to be. Wow. <laughs> In the call of an apostle, <clears throat> when did that light come on? The light came on in 1988. I had no clue what it was. All right? Yes. In 1988, I was in the African Methodist Episcopal <laughs> Church. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. African Methodist Episcopal uh, Church. Right. And I went to, I didn't even know it was a apostolic prophetic church. I didn't know what it was. I went to this church, <laughs> and they said, the Lord has called you for the apostolic office. And I said, okay. So I went back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I said, what that is? Right. I didn't even know what an apostle was. <laughs> right, 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 right. Had no clue. Wow. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> this year will be almost 30 years, but it's been training. Yes, it's and the whole thing is in the love affair. Mm -hmm. He said, "All I did in my office was love." He said, "Because I love, I produced supernatural yes. results." That's right. I said, oh, "Okay," and he, you know, he challenged me. He said, "If you're major on love," he said, "I can do all the rest of it. Wow. Let me love <coughs> you, yeah. and let me love through you, mm -hmm. Amen. and I'll cause my children." You know that all says is for the perfecting of the saints. That's yes. it. So they that's can it. work the ministry. That's it. And this is classic. That's it. Yes, that's absolutely. It. That's absolutely. Yeah. That's classic. Ab ab absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It is. For the perfecting of the saints. Yeah. So they can work the ministry. Yeah. What's exciting now, why says his congregation is larger than mine. Yes. yes. You know what I'm talking about? And, and I, I'm, I'm excited about it because it's, it, one of the joys of being a father is seeing the success of your children. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, he's he's been 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 growing at an exponential rate. Yes, he has. It hasn't been. Yes, he How long has. you been doing this? Twenty um, pastoring. Years. Well, pastoring six years. Right. I mean, at, your, at this at this new beginning, it's been six years now. Yeah, since uh, Phyllis Wheatley, it's yeah. been six years. And and he's been been growing. Yes, sir. And yes, it, sir. I contributed to the the you know the the partnership he has with his apostle absolutely well, I, I can see to that, that. It, it's, it's, see it's that. all connected to who you connect to, to. Yeah. Um, um, and, and apostle um, there have been many men of God that has tried to come and give me better offers mm. and tell me what they can do for me mm. and I tell them all the time you is not my father come on I am connected I am dedicated um, you can't pull me away um, this is a hard connection. Some people run because somebody offered them something greater. But what greater is it a voice that's in your life? I know people yes. can give you money. I know people can give you this. But who can ever save your life? Why would you leave the person who helped save your life? Now, I know they can give you a building, help you buy this, help you do this, grow you, give you a title, and give you all that. Mm -hmm. But can they give you what he gave me? Amen. Absolutely not. And, and and I and I find that that competitiveness unwarranted. Yes. It's not needed. It's not needed. It's, it's not needed. And and see, I love the fact, Apostle, um, you're a man of my own heart. Just give it away. Yeah. Just make it a strings seat. attached is it can hang you. Make it a seat. <laughs> make Just it a seat. Like, and make you did it all the way from the beginning. Right. Before you came here, mm -hmm. you was willing to give it all away, which no, you did. Wait, you gave no, I it didn't. Away. No, I didn't. You didn't give it all. That's still impossible. I made it a seed. I don't give away nothing. Well, that's what I mean. Right. 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 Exactly. But see, if you're going to teach, I'm always teaching. Teaching. Yeah. So my words are so powerful. The reason most believers don't give because they think they're giving it away. Right. Gotcha. Rather, rather than <laughs> investing. They're, 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 yeah. so. they're not investing in their future. Right. 
Right. So the enemy tell them, you just getting us away, don't get to the church, da 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 da. So I always show yes. people, I say, if you're investing in the kingdom, you're guaranteed to return. Amen. Yeah. Guaranteed to return. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, Pastor Greg, yes, sir. what's happening over there on 73rd and Clark? Well, looky here. We are preparing for our summit meeting. Summit meeting? Yes, sir. It is a summit meeting. Uh, we are preparing. A summit is uh, the calling together of governmental officials mm. to come and have a meeting mm. about a strategic plan. Wow. And so we call in the governmental office together, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists. Wow. We're calling them together. I know most people like to have revivals. But I found out that we as the body of Christ yes. need yes. to come together and be impacted or have an impartation so that we can go back and impact our world. Amen. It is time. For us to quit just having church. Yes, yes. And the four walls. And yes. we're just jumping and we shouting and we're falling out and nobody's life is changing. Mm. It is time for demonstration. Yes. So we always do a summit meeting. And I know uh, your your pastor is one of our speakers yes, on yes, Friday. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Pastor Chelsea. Yes, she's going to be yes. with us on Friday uh, the 30th. Uh, we have Apostle uh, Kevin Lucas that's going to be with us on Saturday at 4 o'clock. And then after that, on Sunday at 4 o'clock, we are having a special healing service. Because to me, after the word, there has to be a demonstration. Yes, sir. And so we're believing for signs, wonders, and miracles. So we're just coming together as an apostolic prophetic office, and we're coming together to meet, to get instructions, to go out and be an impact to our whole world. You know, we, you said it earlier today uh, during this broadcast about the fivefold ministry in unity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so happy that you're doing this with those outside of your your church building. Amen. You have to. Exactly, because <laughs> now they can go back into their churches. Yes, absolutely. And share the summit with them. Yes. That 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 are there. How did that get put on your heart to do that? Um, about four years ago, um, the Lord just placed it on my heart. We first started off doing a revival. And at the end of every month in October, I mean every year in October, we always did a revival. Okay. Then the Lord told me about three years ago, he said, I don't want any more revivals. Mm. He said, listen, we've been reviving and reviving and reviving, and we still ain't got revived. Mm. We just coming together to say we having something. No souls getting saved. Nobody getting delivered. We just having good preaching and everybody going home and saying we had church. He said, it's time to call the summit meeting. Mm. It's time to call the people together. The first time we did it, we called it, and the prophet speaks. So yes. we bought in prophets. We bought in um, prophet Marcellus Winters. We bought in prophet Marcus Taylor. We bought in different ones who began to give us a prophetic utterance from the Lord. On last year, we had the apostles speak. Wow. And we bought in Apostle Harold Carter. We bought in my apostle, which yes. always is going to be a part of it. Right, right. We bought in an apostle from Detroit, Michigan. And this year... As we were seeking the God, I said, what do you want to do this year? He said, listen, it's time to have a time of impact. He said, call in the gifts because it's time for the gifts to come in and make impartation to other gifts so we can go out and be the gift. Oh, wow. That, that, that is absolutely <laughs> awesome. When is this going to take place? It's going to take place Friday, starting on Friday, next Friday. Can I see that? Yes, you quick? can. My, my computer just went. went That's all right. Haywire. So I'm going to get a focus of that and share it with everybody. But go ahead. We start on next Friday, um, okay. October the 30th, okay. 7 p.m. Um, Pastor Chelsea will be our guest speaker Woo! and her ministry. And I know you know her. I yes, think you yes. got excited when I mentioned yes. her name. Yep. She is a fireball. She is a woman of God. And we're just excited about that. On, um, on Saturday at 4 o'clock, because we want to have it where everybody can still come out. And still make it to church on Sunday and won't yeah. have an excuse. Yeah. So at 4 o'clock, we will be having Apostle Lucas. 
he will be coming in and he will be bringing the word of God on uh, 4 o'clock on Saturday, October the 31st. And then on Sunday, oh my goodness, at 4 p.m. Now this was not planned. Uh -huh. um, as you see, the first uh, flyers we put out did not have that on there. Oh yeah. And the Lord came back and he said to me, he said, I need you to add another service. Mm. And I, I went to my apostle and I said, listen, we need to have a healing service. He believes in healing. I believe in healing. Amen. Uh, we believe that uh, healing is still in the land. Yeah. I know a lot of times the believers don't believe. Amen. Come on, come on. <laughs> I talked come on. about it on Sunday. I said, you know, it's, a, it's amazing um, that we call ourselves believers, but we don't believe. don't believe. The church don't believe. Uh, we had a young lady in our church on yesterday who said someone called her and asked her to pray for someone in third uh, stage cancer. And she said, well, I'm going to pray, but why don't you bring them to our healing service? She said, well, I don't think we can come to the healing service. You know why? Because they just wanted to have a prayer. They didn't want to have healing. healing. They just wanted to have some comfort. But we believe in the signs, wonders, and miracles at New Beginnings Ministries. And so we're going to cap it off because after we get our strategic plan and we get the apostolic prophetic utterances from the speakers that come in, then we have been fasting all month. We're on a 30-day fast, amen. Yes, yes. We've been fasting and praying because he said, this too shall come by fasting and praying. Pray, yes. And then at the end of it, my spiritual father will be coming in and operating in his gift. And if you haven't seen him operating his gift, uh, my goodness, you need to come out. I'm telling you, if you know someone's sick, someone afflicted, someone who needs a word from the Lord, I'm telling you, bring them out. Now, Apostle. Yes, sir. Help yeah. me with this healing. Okay. <laughs> help me with this healing. Okay. When someone comes to a healing service, mm -hmm. it's really a done deal, isn't it? <laughs> well, not necessarily. Okay, explain. In Matthew, the 15th chapter, in the 26th verse, it says, Healing is the children's bread. Mm. One of the greatest things about coming to a healing service is the aroma of the bread. You, you ever been somewhere where you just walk by the door mm. and the smell of the bread intoxicated mm. your soul? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> Nothing like some fresh bread. We intend to be intoxicated. Yes. Yes. It comes out of that atmosphere. You remember now, and, 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 love produces healing. Yes. Yeah. Jesus yeah. was intoxicated. Yeah. Yes. He was absolutely intoxicated. Yeah. The Bible said he went about mm. to do good. He he was the bread. We intend to have the bread like that in such an awesome way that the aroma mm. is going to be so intoxicating that well, we're going to do this. Anybody that don't want to get healed shouldn't come. Yes. How well, that's, about that? That, that, that's, that, that was my point. I've, yeah. I've, I've <clears throat> seen over the years, mm -hmm. uh, just with my ministry, Okay. when someone asked for healing, mm -hmm. it was a done deal because they had faith. Mm -hmm. They had faith. They had an awesome now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, had, they believed that Christ works through us right. to heal them, mm -hmm. they, they, and they got healed. Mm -hmm. I've had people come to me with sick dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. Sick, sick dog. I can see My it. dog is sick. Mm -hmm. Can you lay hands on him? Right. Absolutely. Just because of your faith. Absolutely. The dog That's is going to be healed. That's, That's it. it. The dog is going to be healed. I was called to a, uh, a home. I'll never forget this. This is when it really hit me. I was called to a home on uh, Omen Avenue. Okay. In uh, Cleveland, off of uh, Lakeview, 124. And... I was called to come by, and the, the man was laying on the floor dying. Oh. I'll never forget this. Oh, and the paramedics came up. Da -da 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 -da. You know, all these paramedics are there. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there with butterflies in my stomach. Because gotcha. this was my first true gotcha. time doing this. <clears throat> and like that voice, mm -hmm. you heard Apostle mm -hmm. Nelson's, I heard the voice. Right. Tell him, Joe. It was actually Joe. What was it? Joe, you're a, Joe. You are Joe. You're not a something about Joe. You have life, or or mm -hmm. was something? No, no, okay. no, no, it's giving me. But it, it was to say his name in front of all these, these yeah, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think it was Joe. Get up. It was Joe. Wake up, or, or something, something. Mm -hmm. And I, I when so. I said exactly what God told me to say, I didn't saying? deviate. Yes, right. Yeah, I, I just said exactly what yeah. He said. Yeah, right. and I said it with authority. Mm -hmm. 
no one that these people going to look at me like I was crazy. Yeah. They looked up for a second and then <laughs> life came in here and they started working and putting things on them and everything like that. Yeah. And yeah. I was wow. like, wow. Yes. It was yeah. a testimony for me. Yes, sir. That it works. It works. When you hear him right. say, do this, it works. And I was like, oh, my God. Well, listen, Apostle, think about this. Jesus said this, and this is what we're using for our theme scripture. He said we're supposed to do the greater works. Yes. Yeah. Why are we doing less work than Jesus did? Yes. If the greater works is available to us as believers, yes. why are we not displaying the greater works? Right. It is time to get back to the signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes. It is time for yes. the demonstration yes. of what God is doing in this season. Right. Because God is trying to prove to the world He bigger than medicine. He bigger than the hospital. Mm -hmm. He bigger than all that. He's trying to reestablish himself yes. and he needs us, us to, to do, do it. it. And, and we <laughs> can't fear doing the instructions that he gives us. He, you say he gives a simple instruction. And actually, yeah. it was, yeah. it, it, yeah. I think the word, I believe now is coming back to me. Joe, it's not your time. Okay. See that? Joe, it's not your time. And he and he uh, mathematically rose up and they started putting flashlights in his mouth and all kind of, and he and he came he came back Amen. to life. Yes. Amen. And I see now that 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 we have to become more in love or let God more love us right. to use us. Yes. First John. It, 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 oh man. You first John back four eighteen is so powerful. Yeah. Watch what it says. Apostle says. Perfect love casts out fear. Mm. Yes. Because fear has torment. Yes. He that fears is not made perfect. So when you introduce wow. healing in the atmosphere of love, what it does not, it eliminates fear. Amen. So I'm talking about when, when you eliminate fear, <laughs> the, then people can receive. See. If you look at what happened with Jesus. Yes. There was an atmosphere of love. Yes. That made faith work in others. Come on. Jesus never, once this not. We measure people's faith. He never did. Jesus demonstrated <laughs> what they exercised because <laughs> they believed in him. Well, Apostle, we are out of time. Amen. Amen. This has been a great <laughs> show, a great conversation. Thank you again, Amen. Pastor uh, uh, Greg, for just being a part of the KAZ Radio family. And we just want to let the folks out there know that we love you, Jesus loves you, yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it. Until next time, Amen. God bless. Excellent, excellent. Man, we can talk all day. Oh. <laughs> we can talk all day. We can talk all day. That was great. That, oh, that was, was good. good. That very was good. good. That Thank was you for the opportunity. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you need new 